गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेज केमिस्ट्री क्लास सो आई होप यू ऑल हैव कम्पीटेड शॉर्ट आंसर्स लॉन्ग आंसर्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप क्वेश्चन ऑफ चैप्टर टू सो आई टोल्ड यू डेट आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द आंसर्स ऑफ चैप्टर टू बट आई हैव पोस्टेड इन द स्कूल वेबसाइट सो इट्स बेटर यू गो देयर एंड डाउनलोड एट पार्ट एंड कंपेयर द आंसर्स ऑफ द शॉर्ट आंसर्स ओके आंसर की ऑफ द ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप क्वेश्चन are posted in the school website so go there and compare your answers okay all the answers for short answers also long answers and objective type questions of both the chapter is posted so if anyone have not done please go there and check and then complete all your work okay so today we will be starting third chapter the name of the third, cha third chapter is elements compounds and mixture so i hope that these topics you all have already read in the previous class and some of the part is clear to you all okay so let's start with the introduction so i have told you in the first chapter that everything around us is made up of matter okay so matters are also classified into elements compound and mixture so there are various matter around us okay so some of the matters will be in the form of elements some of them will be in the form of compounds and some of them will be in the form of mixture okay now this classification helps chemists to study about the matter okay study about the matter uh, kind of matter a substance is made of okay it helps the chemist to study about any substance okay and the kind of matter of which it is made of suppose it is made of elements then chemist will study of accordingly if it is made up of mixture then chemists will study accordingly if it is made of compound then chemists will study accordingly so this classification helps the chemist to study about the matter of which substance is made of okay now let's start with our very first topic elements okay so first topic is elements so elements how you are going to define this elements okay so elements are basically those substance which cannot be split into more simpler substance by any chemical means so an element an element cannot be split into more simpler substance by any chemical means okay so with any chemical means you are not going we, are, we will not able to split the elements so those type of substances which cannot be split into more simpler substances by any chemical means are known as elements so for example hydrogen oxygen nitrogen gold silver okay all these are the elements and these are the elements which cannot be split into more simpler substance so basically the elements will not be able to split okay so now the question is if it is not split by any chemical means will it be split by any physical means such as filtration distillation and all so answer will be what no because chemical means is much more stronger than any physical means so if any substance is not able to split by chemical means then uh, obviously it will be not be splitted by any physical means okay now the substance which cannot be split into more simpler substance by any physical means is known as pure substance okay the substance which cannot be split into more simpler substance by any physical means such as filtration distillation sublimation then that type of substance is known as pure substance so i think that about pure substance already you have studied in the previous class okay so what are pure substance a substance a substance which 
cannot be split into more simpler substance by any physical means are or you can say is is a pure substance okay so what i told you that elements cannot be split into more simpler substance by any chemical means that means they cannot be split by any physical means also so elements falls under the category of what pure substance because the definition of the pure substance says that these substances cannot be split into more simpler substances by any physical means such as filtration distillation sublimation etc okay so i think that uh, elements definition and i'm out about elements it's clear to you all so now we are going to study elements are represented by symbols now there are various symbolic representation of elements we are going to study about the symbols okay by which elements are represented elements are represented by symbols elements are represented by symbols so there are various symbols by which elements are represented so basically any elements are represented either by one letter symbol or by two letter symbol okay either they will be represented by one letter or by two letter symbols so let us study why some of the symbols are represented by one letter or why some of the sim some of the elements are represented by two letter symbol okay so elements such as hydrogen okay hydrogen is represented by what symbol capital h oxygen is represented by capital o nitrogen is represented by capital n then what else carbon is represented by capital c then sulfur is represented by capital s fluorine by F. so these are the various elements which are represented by only by one letter which is in capital okay these are represented by only le one letter symbol okay now the first letter these are the letter or or what from where this symbol came this symbol came from the first letter of the name of the element okay so the hydrogen start with what letter h so that symbol of h came from where from the first letter of the name of that particular element then what about oxygen it also came from the first letter of the name of the element oxygen similarly fluorine from where this f came f came from the uh, from the first letter of the name of the particular element okay so we from where these name these symbols derive these symbol derive from the first letter of the name of the particular elements okay now let us talk about two lettered symbol this was about one lettered symbol now we are going to study about two letter symbol so why this two letter symbol came we could have done like this only one letter one letter uh, would, could can be used as a symbol for the elements but why two letter symbol was there two letter symbol came because there are various elements whose name start with the same letter okay there are various elements whose name start with the same letter of the english alphabet and because of that in order to make a difference or you can say in order to distinguish between those elements the two letter symbol came into existence okay so let us talk about some of the elements 
for example helium now helium also the name of the helium starts with the same letter that is h so in order to distinguish it from the hydrogen the symbol of the helium is what h e helium okay remember that in the two letter symbol the first letter will always be a capital and second letter will be also will, will always be small okay in the two letter symbol the first letter will be capital and second letter will always be small okay so both and both of them will not be in a capital first letter will be what a capital and second letter will be small similarly what about neon nitrogen starts with the letter n so now neon is a gas whose name also start with the same letter as n so in order to distinguish what has been done neon n e so neon is represented by what symbol n e now carbon start with the uh, capital letter c but what about chlorine now chlorine also uh, chlorine name also start with the same letter that is c so in order to distinguish its symbol will be cl chlorine okay now there are various other symbol also now what about copper copper also start with the uh, same letter that is uh, same letter that is c okay but its name its name uh, from where the symbol of the copper that is cu came into existence it came from the latin name of the copper okay so copper latin name is what cupra okay cupra so there are certain elements whose symbols are also derived from the name of the latin names okay some of the symbol some of the elements uh, some of the element symbol derived from the latin name okay so two letter symbol can either be from the name of the elements or from the latin name of the elements so two letter will be what from the name of the elements that is neon chlorine and all and some of the symbols will be derived from the latin name for example sodium now sodium name start with but what letter s but the symbol of the sodium is what sodium symbol is what n a so from where this n a symbol came so this n a symbol came from the latin name of the sodium that is natrium okay so the latin name of the sodium is what natrium natrium okay similarly iron okay so i am writing here these these things are important so you should know what symbol came from the name of the original name of the element and what symbol came from the latin name of the element so what about iron now iron start with the what letter i but its symbol is fe so from where the symbol fe came it came from the latin name ferrum okay ferrum okay now gold gold symbol is au and au it can be what g but it's not g it's au so it's derived from the latin name aurum okay it derived from the latin name aurum so similarly there are various other elements whose symbol will be derived are derived of not will be are derived from the latin names instead of their original names okay so the two letter symbols can be either from their original names first or uh, not first two first letter will be included but other other letter can be from anywhere so here what you have seen i have taken na okay na but in this case in this case you see au okay here fe what about uh, what about this <clears throat> argentum okay silver is represented by ag okay and from where this ag came it came from the latin name argentum okay here what you have seen 
the symbol is derived from the first letter that is capital and the so, uh, then the R is not there but G is there so from uh, third place not from the second place but from the third place G has been taken so it's not necessary that uh, the two letter symbol will be the two continuous letter it can be a uh, second letter can be from somewhere in between the name okay it's not necessary that uh, if a uh, natrium is there then NA is, is here then in every name the second letter will be used the second letter that is small letter can be from anywhere okay so just you have to remember that uh, symbols or uh, elements are represented by symbols and those symbols can be uh, one letter or it can be two letter now the two letter symbols can be from their name original name or they can be from their latin name okay so i think that uh, this part is clear to you all Similarly, in your book, there are various symbols given of the elements. So, when you will get your book, you just read those elements and see the symbols. Try to learn the symbols of those elements. Okay? So, I hope that why two letter symbol came is clear to you all. It is why? It is due to avoid the confusion. Because there are various elements whose name starts with the same letter. Okay. Let's talk about next topic. Next topic is compounds. Okay, about elements we have studied. Now we are going to study about compounds. Okay. Now about compounds also I think you all have studied. Now compounds are those substances which can be split into simpler substance by chemical means. Compounds are substances substance which can be split into simpler substance by chemical means okay so these are the substances which can be split into more simpler substances by chemical means so not by physical means but by chemical means what we have studied about elements elements are those substances which cannot be split into simpler substances by chemical means but compounds are those substances which can be split into simpler substances by chemical means okay now compounds are formed out of what they are formed by the elements they are formed by the combination of various types of elements let's study how okay when two or more elements combine then then only compound formation take place let's talk about hydrogen h2o h2 is a compound okay now you can see in H2O, it is made out of what two elements? It is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, it is made of what two elements? Hydrogen and oxygen. Similarly, carbon dioxide is also a compound. So, in this, it is made out of two elements, carbon and oxygen. Similarly, calcium carbonate. Now, in the case of calcium carbonate, it is made out of three elements. Calcium, carbon and oxygen. So, what you can see in the case of compounds. Compounds are made when two or more elements combine together. Okay. So, there are various examples given in your book. Okay. So, one example is of sugar. Sugar formula is C6H12O6. Okay. So, here... The sugar molecule is formed out of what elements? It's made out of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So likewise, the compound formation takes place when elements combine together. Okay. And it can be what? Two or more. Next, 
splitting of a compound into simpler substance so in the definition i have told you these are those substances which can be split into simpler substances by chemical means so now in this topic we are going to study about those chemical methods by which compounds can be split into simpler substances splitting splitting of a compound of a compound into simpler substance substances splitting of a compound into simpler substances okay so we have already talked in a definition that compounds can be split into simpler substance by chemical means so very first topic is electrolysis okay now this topic is very important okay electrolysis okay so electrolysis is a chemical decomposition brought by passing electric current into the liquid or a solution so what is electrolysis electrolysis is a chemical decomposition okay so i am writing uh, definition here on the top electrolysis is the chemical decomposition okay electrolysis electrolysis is a chemical decomposition is a chemical decomposition brought by brought by brought by passing electric current the passing electric current into into the solution or a liquid okay so this is the definition if you want to note down then you note down okay electrolysis is a chemical decomposition brought by passing electric current into the solution or a liquid so what we are going to use here we are going to use electric current in order to decompose any solution or a liquid so this electrolysis phenomena can be easily understood uh, taking example of water so let's see how chemical decomposition of water is there so when the uh, chemical decomposition of water is there by passing electric current then it decompose into hydrogen and oxygen so how it is brought okay so let's study about this now pure water pure form of water is bad conductor of electricity in pure water if you will try to pass electric current then electric current will not pass or you can say it is a bad conductor of electricity electricity will not pass through it so in order to conduct this experiment what we have to do we have to make some amount of dilute acid into the water okay so that acid can be hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid so when we add some amount of acid into the water so that water is known as acidulated water okay so that water is known as what <coughs> acidulated water so why we are adding this acid into the water because pure water is bad conductor of electricity so when we add this acid some amount of acid into the water then it will be very good conductor of electricity okay acid related acid related water is what a good conductor of electricity okay now when electric current pass through this acid related water then it decompose into hydrogen and oxygen so how this phenomena takes place for that we are going to draw 
one diagram here okay so one setup is arranged for this purpose then this phenomenon takes place so let's see how the setup is there so this diagram which i am going to draw is very important okay so it's expected that you all learn this diagram okay electrolysis of water okay we are going to study about electrolysis of water So let us see how electrolysis of water is carried out. So in order to carry out this electrolysis of water, we are going to take one trough. Okay. This is setup which we are going to discuss how the setup of electrolysis is there. So in this we have taken one trough and then in the trough two electrodes are also arranged. Okay. Two electrodes are arranged. Okay. And in this trough, what we are taking? We are taking water. Okay. We are taking water. Okay. So water will be there in this also. And this water is what? This water is not normal water. This is acidulated water. Acidulated water and just now we have discussed that acidulated water is good conductor of electricity. So electricity will pass very easily. Next what we are taking? We are taking one battery. Here we are taking one battery. Okay. Now this battery is having two terminals. So first terminal will be positive okay and one wire is being joined here at this electrode okay like this so this will be what positive electrode because it is joined to the positive terminal of the battery so this electrode will be what anode this will be what anode positive electrode okay Next terminal will be what? Negative. Negative terminal. Negative. So now one wire will be drawn from here and it will join to the negative electrode that is cathode. This is cathode. So this anode will be what? Positive. This anode will be positive electrode and this cathode will be negative electrode okay so when electricity will pass to this acidulated water okay so basically this wire which we have taken is insulated but some portion of this uh, wire will not be insulated some wire uh, some uh, some portion of the wire will be naked okay so this naked wire is being inserted in this water it is acidulated water so when electricity will pass through the water what will happen the water will split into two elements okay h2 is there and when electricity is being passed then it split into hydrogen and oxygen Okay, it is split into hydrogen and oxygen on passing of electricity. You can write here electric current is passed. Okay, then split into hydrogen and oxygen. So, on which terminal or on which electrode hydrogen gas will be collected and on which electrode oxygen gas be collected? So, hydrogen is having positive charge, so it will be collected at the negative electrode that is cathode so hydrogen will be collected here hydrogen will be collected here okay so where hydrogen will be collected here okay suppose this is a portion so at the a portion hydrogen will be collected okay 
So hydrogen is collected in the form of gas over here, and then where oxygen will be collected? Oxygen will be collected at the positive electrode that is anode because it is having negative charge. So oxygen will be collected here in the B portion in the form of gas. So like this, the electrolysis of water is being carried out. First of all, the arrangement is made. Then two electrodes is taken. So now two electrodes are joined to the battery, terminal of battery. Now terminal of the battery will decide whether they are positive electrode or they are negative electrode. Then, then when splitting takes place, then one element will be collected at one, one electrode and other element will be collected at the another electrode. So like this, electrolysis of water is carried out. Okay, so in, in order to understand it better, I would like to write in the short way, okay. In your book it is discussed, okay, in order to remember this electrolysis of water process, short way, how it can be represented. So water is taken, which is acidulated, okay. When electricity will pass, what will happen? Means electrolysis is carried out then. Electrolysis is carried out. Then what is done? One portion will be what? Here one terminal is what? Negative electrode. That is cathode. And other portion will be positive electrode. That is anode. Okay. Then where the hydrogen will be collected? Hydrogen will be collected at the negative electrode. That is cathode. And at the positive electrode, what is collected? Oxygen. Okay. So like this, the process of electrolysis is carried out. Okay. When electric current is passed through the acidulated water, then it splits into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen will be collected at the negative electrode, that is cathode. And oxygen will be collected at the positive electrode, that is anode. Okay. So I hope that electrolysis of water is clear to you all. Next chemical means is thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition. Now, from this term thermal decomposition, it's clear, it's talking about thermal. That is heat. And decomposition means what? Splitting. So, splitting of any substance into simpler substance by passing what? Heat energy. Or you can say, the splitting of substance into simpler substance by action of heat on it is known as thermal decomposition. So, you can say that splitting, splitting of a substance, splitting of a substance into Simpler substance into simpler substance by the action of heat on it is called thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition okay so in this we are going to study about some of the examples in which compound get splitted by passing heat energy on it okay so very first example is of calcium carbonate that is chalk okay calcium carbonate CaCO3 this is what chalk okay so what happened when we pass heat on it, 
then it decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so it decomposes into more simpler substance that is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so calcium oxide and carbon dioxide is simpler than car calcium carbonate so we can say that this calcium carbonate is split into more simpler substance by passing heat energy on it okay next example is of zinc carbonate okay zinc carbonate when heat is passed on it then it decomposes into zinc oxide and carbon dioxide so this is the splitting goes on when heat energy is passed on zinc carbonate similarly some other examples are also there i hope that this definition is clear <clears throat> in your book formulas are not given they these reactions are given in sentence form but i am writing in the formula form so any of you if interested to write down or copy somewhere then you can copy it okay so next example is of sodium hydrogen carbonate okay sodium hydrogen carbonate so when heat is being passed on it then it decomposes into sodium carbonate sodium carbonate plus water plus carbon dioxide okay so it splits into this sodium by uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate when it is when heat is passed on it then it decomposes into sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide so these substances are simpler than sodium hydrogen carbonate okay so we can say that when heat is being passed on the substance is split into more simpler substances okay the next example is of lead nitrate okay when heat is passed on it then it split into lead oxide nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen okay so it split into these three substances when lead nitrate when on lead nitrate heat is passed then it split into lead oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen so we can say that lead nitrate is split into more simpler substance when heat is being passed okay so i am doing balancing also you will study about balancing in the next coming chapter okay so this is how the equation is balanced okay and uh, this is the these are the uh, substance which we get when any substance is split with the help of heat energy so i think that these uh, reactions are clear so these are the certain examples which we have discussed under thermal th thermal decomposition okay next the compounds are represented by formula okay next topic is the compounds are represented by formula now here whatever i have written compound name only i have written but these are in the form of formula okay i have written in the form of formula so compound is represented by the formula which show how many atoms of the particular elements is used for making that particular formula okay so what does the formula if any formula is there h2 you take only okay so what this formula is giving information this formula is giving information that uh, two atoms of the hydrogen and one atom of oxygen is combined together to give one molecule of uh, water okay so this is the information which we, which we get from the formula of any compound so compounds are represented by the formula which tells that how many atoms of the particular element is combined together to give that particular molecule okay constitute the molecule of the compound okay similarly if you will take any example you take ammonia nh3 then here what information we get from this formula we get information that one atom of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen is combined together to give one molecule of ammonia then what about hydrochloric acid 
hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid with hcl formula is what hcl so what information we are getting one atom of hydrogen combined with one atom of chlorine to give one molecule of hydrochloric acid similarly there are various example ammonium chloride nh4 cl here this is also a compound this name is what ammonium chloride ammonium chloride okay here what information we have got one atom of nitrogen four atom of hydrogen and one atom of chlorine is combined together now here what are the three elements used nitrogen hydrogen and chlorine so these atoms how many atoms we also got information how many atoms have combined together to give one molecule of ammonium chloride so similarly there are various examples which are discussed in your book you read from your book okay so basically what information we get by a formula of a compound we get it to know that how many atoms of the particular elements have combined together to give the molecule of the particular compound okay basically this information we get from the formula okay now the next topic which we are going to study is important characteristics of a compound okay now we are going to study about some of the characteristics of the compound okay next topic is important important characteristics characteristics of a compound important characteristics are first the first characteristic is a compound can be split or you can say compound can be split into constituent element by chemical means okay a compound can be split into its constituent elements only by chemical means but not by physical means the first characteristic is what compounds compounds can be split into its constituents constituent elements a compound can be split into its constituent elements only by chemical means only by chemical means but not by physical means okay physical means such as filtration distillation sublimation and all all these okay so compounds can be split into its constituent elements only by chemical means but not by physical means okay so i have we have already discussed uh, splitting of some of the compounds we have discussed about water so it is split into its constituent elements that is hydrogen and oxygen by chemical means known as electrolysis then we have talked about calcium carbonate it also decompose into its constituent elements that is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide only by chemical means that is by thermal heating or you, or you can say by heating when you will heat that compound then only it split into its constituent elements that is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so no physical means can be employed to split any kind of compound okay now we have talked that hydrogen can be obtained by the electrolysis of water but there are certain other method also by which we can obtain hydrogen so some of the method is discussed in your book so i am going to discuss that okay so what we have talked that when water 
split when electric, electricity passes through it, it splits into what? Hydrogen and oxygen. But what happens when active metal such as sodium reacts with water? Okay? When active metal such as sodium reacts with water, then also hydrogen gas evolves. So the product is sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Then also hydrogen gas evolved. So these are the certain other methods which can be employed in order to get hydrogen gas. Through electrolysis also we can get hydrogen by splitting of water molecules. But by the reaction of active metal, this is sodium and it is active metal. When this metal reacts with the hydrogen, then a hydrogen gas evolves. Okay. So there are other metal also when uh, metal such as magnesium, iron and uh, zinc react with the acid such as hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid then also hydrogen gas evolve. Okay? Metals such as magnesium, zinc and iron when reacts with acid such as hydrochloric acid that is SCL and sulfuric acid then also hydrogen gas evolve. So this is the reaction when magnesium reacts with the SCL then what form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas what else then zinc when react with sulfuric acid then what we get zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas okay one more example is there iron iron when react with the sulfuric acid then we get the iron sulfate and hydrogen gas okay so these acid are dilute acid okay in every case we have used dilute acid Okay, so these are the various methods by which we can get hydrogen gas. Either by the action of active metal on water, we can get hydrogen gas or the reaction of metals such as magnesium, zinc and iron with the dilute acid, we can get hydrogen gas. So all these are what? These are chemical method only. Okay, so uh, the property, the first property which we have studied is what? Uh, the chemic the compounds can be split into its uh, constituent elements only by chemical means but not by physical means and these are this is what this is some of the methods by which we can get hydrogen gas so the question can be like this that discuss some of the methods by which we can get hydrogen gas so first method is electrolysis but these are also some of the methods Okay, so I hope that today's topic is clear to you all and we are having some more characteristics to be discussed. Okay, but now the time is uh, uh, time is completed. So I think that uh, in next class we will be studying some more characteristics of the compound. Till then whatever you have learned today, revise it. Okay, thank you.